So in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve equations with rational exponents. So rational exponents, remember, are when you have an exponent that's a fraction. Remember that these can be rewritten as radicals. m, which is the numerator of the fraction, will become the power. n, which is the denominator, will become the index. So let's rewrite this using rational exponents. So when we rewrite this, we get x, and then the 4, which is the power, will become the numerator. The 5, which is the index, will become the denominator. So this is the same thing as x to the 4 fifths. So remember, you can eliminate a rational exponent in an equation by raising both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power. Remember that a reciprocal of a fraction is when you take that fraction and flip the numerator and denominator. So the reciprocal of 2 fifths will be 5 over 2. So to solve an equation with a rational exponent, you're going to start off by isolating the term containing the rational exponent. Then you're going to raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power, and then solve for the value of the variable. So let's try solving the equation 4x to the 2 thirds equals 16. So we need to get the term with the exponent in it by itself. Well, it's not by itself because we have this 4 in front. So we're going to undo that by dividing both sides by 4. So that gives us x to the 2 thirds equals 16 divided by 4, which is 4. So we can now undo this exponent by raising both sides to the 3 over 2 power, right? That is the reciprocal. So when we do that, notice on the left that everything cancels, so we're left with just x. So we have x equals 4 to the 3 over 2 power. So now, if you would like, you can do this on your calculator by typing 4 and then choosing the caret button and then entering parentheses 3 over 2. If you would like, you could also do it by hand. If I do it by hand, I'm going to rewrite this as a radical. So denominator becomes the index, and then numerator becomes power. So that gives me x equals the square root of 64, which is x equals 8. And that is the same answer you will find if you enter this on the calculator. So now let's try solving this equation. 2 times x to the 4 fifths minus 11 equals 10. So once again, our strategy is going to be to get that term with a rational exponent by itself. So we're going to start off by dividing both sides of this equation by 2. So that gives us x to the 4 fifths minus 11 equals 5. Now to solve for x, we're going to work on isolating that term. And so we're going to add 11 to both sides. So that gives us x to the 4 fifths power equals 5 plus 11, which is 16. So now we can undo that exponent by raising both sides to the reciprocal, which is 5 over 4. So when we do that, we get x equals, and then we can enter this in our calculator as 16 caret 5 over 4. So when you do that, you should find that 16 to the 5 over 4 gives you x equals 32. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try solving this problem on your own. To solve this equation, you're going to isolate the term with a rational exponent by adding 12 to both sides. So when you add 12 to both sides, you get x to the 2 thirds equals 25. And then you can undo that 2 thirds power by raising both sides to the 3 over 2 power. That gives you an answer of x equals 125. So what if we need to solve the equation 3 times x to the 5 fourths equals x to the 7 over 2? Notice we have two terms with rational exponents. So our strategy here is going to be to try and combine them. Well, remember, back when you learned about exponents, you learned about something called the quotient rule. If I divide two terms with the same base but different exponents, remember I can combine them by subtracting the exponents. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 5 over 4. And so I have x to the 5 over 4 being divided on both sides. So that gives me 3 equals x. And then I need to subtract these exponents in order to combine these two terms. right? So 7 over 2 minus 5 over 4. So when I do that, I have 7 over 2 minus 5 over 4. Remember that I need a common denominator in order to subtract fractions. So I'm going to multiply this first fraction by 2 over 2. So I have 14 over 4 minus 5 over 4. And that equals 9 over 4. So I have 3 equals x to the 9 over 4 power. I can undo that 9 over 4 power by raising both sides to the 4 over 9 power. Right? because 4 over 9 is the reciprocal. So that gives me 3 to the 4 over 9 equals x, which is my answer. 
So now you can pause the video and try this similar example on your own. So once again, our strategy is going to be to use that quotient rule so that we can subtract those exponents and combine those terms. So when we do that, we get um, x to the 5 over 2 over x to the 3 over 4. So when we subtract them, we get 7 over 4. We can undo that exponent of 7 over 4 by raising both sides to the 4 over 7 power, which gives us 5 to the 4 over 7 equals x. So we can also use power properties to rewrite equations. So this will allow us to solve some complex equations by rewriting them using what is known as a dummy variable. So let's suppose we have to solve the equation 2x to the 1 half minus 11x to the 1 fourth plus 12 equals 0. We'll notice that we have two terms that have a rational exponent. We need to figure out some way of combining those terms, but we can't do that because they're being separated by a subtraction sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename something called a dummy variable. So we're going to pick a variable, let's say n, and we're going to say that x equals x to the 1 fourth. Okay, so this is going to allow us to do some substitution, which will help us solve this problem. So what happens if I square both sides of this equation? So what if I have this? I get n squared equals x to the 1 fourth squared. Well, that gives me n squared equals, well, remember, I have that power property. If I have a to the m raised to the n power, that means that I multiply those two powers together. So if I do 1 fourth times 2, that's going to give me x to the 1 half. Well, notice I have some terms right here that I can plug in and substitute into this problem that I have. I can rewrite this as 2n squared, right, because x to the 1 half equals n squared, minus 11n because n equals x to the 1 fourth, and then plus 12 equals 0. Well, now I have a quadratic equation, right? I have something in ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 form, and that's something that I know how to solve. I can solve either using the quadratic formula, or I can solve by factoring. So I'm going to factor this equation. So I'm going to say 2 is a, and then 12 is c. So my a times c is going to give me 24. So my 24 is positive, so I know I need either two positive factors or two negative factors. Well, b in this case is negative, so I'm going to need two negative factors. So I'm going to list out the factors of 24 and make them both negative. So I have 1 and 24, and then 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and then 4 and 6. So if we add these factors together, this first set gives me negative 25, I have negative 14, and finally I have negative 11. So negative 3 and negative 8 are going to be my combination that I need. So I'm going to expand this out. So I'm going to write this as 2n squared minus 8n, and then minus 3n, and then plus 12 equals 0. So I'm going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to put my factors into two groups. So I have 2n squared minus 8n, and then plus negative 3n plus 12. So now I'm going to find the GCF of each of these groups. The GCF of 2n squared and minus 8n is 2n. So I'm going to divide that out from both terms. And then if I look at my second set, I can factor out a negative 3. So I'm going to divide out negative 3 from both terms. And that's equal to 0. So I, when I need, now simplify this, I have 2n times 2n squared over 2n is just going to cancel, leaving me with just n minus 8 over 2 is 4, and then the n's will cancel. And then plus negative, I'm just going to go ahead and combine that to a minus 3. Negative 3 and negative 3 cancel, so I have n. And then 12 divided by negative 3 will be minus 4. So I can pull out that common factor of n minus 4, so I have n minus 4 times 2n minus 3 equals 0. So now I can work on solving this. If I have n minus 4 times 2n minus 3 equals 0, I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. So n minus 4 equals 0, 2n minus 3 equals 0. So over here I'm going to add 4 to both sides, so I have n equals 4. And then here I'm going to add 3, which gives me 2n equals 3, and then divide by 2, which gives me n equals 3 over 2. So now I've solved for n, but I don't need to solve for n, right? I want to find the value of x. So I have n equals x to the 1 fourth. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to plug that back in. So n equals x to the 1 fourth. So I can rewrite these two equations that I found using the x to the 1 fourth. 
So I have x to the 1 fourth equals 4, and then I have x to the 1 fourth equals 3 over 2. So now these are basically two um, equations with rational exponents in them, right? So I can undo that rational exponent by raising both sides to the fourth power because 4 is the reciprocal of 1 over 4. So that will give me x equals 4 to the fourth, um, which is equal to 256. So that is one of my solutions. And then on the right side, if I raise both sides to the fourth power, that will give me x equals 3 to the fourth over 2 to the fourth. So that is x equals 3 to the fourth, which is 81, over 2 to the fourth, which is 16. So 81 over 16 is my other solution. So that's how you can use ideas of rational exponents um, to simplify a problem and turn it into something that you know how to solve. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try this similar problem on your own. So in this problem, we're going to use um, n to represent x equals negative x to the negative 1. So when we do that, we get n squared equals x to the negative 2. So we can rewrite this as a quadratic. 2n squared minus 5n minus 12 equals 0. a times c is negative 24. So remember, when we have a negative product, we need a positive factor and a negative factor. Since b is negative, we're going to make our bigger factor negative. When we list out all the factors, the correct combination is 3 and negative 8. So when we expand this out, we get 2n squared minus 8n plus 3n plus 12 equals 0. Um, and then we factor by grouping. So we can factor a 2n out of the first two terms and a 3 out of the second two terms. And that gives us 2n plus 3 times n minus 4 equals 0. So now we solve for n. So we get n equals negative 3 halves and n equals 4. Um, remember, once we've done solving for n, um, we're not done yet. Uh, we need to go back and plug in for x, so we have x to the negative 1 equals negative 3 over 2, and then x to the negative 1 equals 4. So to undo that x to the negative 1, we're going to need to raise everything to the negative 1 power, right? Because that will give us, by the product property, x to, x to the 1, because negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, which is the same thing as x. So raising everything to the negative 1 power is basically the same thing as taking the reciprocal, so that's how we get x equals negative two-thirds and we get x equals one-fourth. So remember, to solve equations with a rational exponent, you're going to start off by isolating the term with the rational exponent. Then you're going to raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power, solve for the value of the variable, and then you can also use a dummy variable to solve equations that contain rational exponents.